Let's talk about something frugal this time. Let's talk about this used 15-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. If you're on market looking for a used MacBook Pro, be sure to check out this video. So this is a 2013 year model. It has i7 4850H processor, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD storage. When it was released, it had a hefty MSRP of $25.99. I bought it at $465 on eBay auction, so that's around 80% off. Overall, I recommend this uh, device if you are on a budget and you want to get a uh, Mac OS system, or if you don't care about the system, you just want to have a uh, well-built device. I would not recommend this device if you want the best performance for the money. In that case, the recently released AMD Ryzen-based laptops are a better choice, such as Acer Swift 3 or Lenovo Flex 5. Generally, those laptops had better performance as well as longer battery life, but this laptop excels at the, the build quality at the screen. I won't do a detailed full review on it. Reviews for this unit should be everywhere on YouTube, given this is already a six and a half year old laptop. I'll share some of the highlights. I think it will be good to know before making a uh, purchase to a system like this. So the performance. Even though this is a six and a half year old device, the performance is still decent. I use it for most of the on-the-go mobile computing tasks, such as web browsing, playing videos. I had a similarly spec 2015 model year one as my work laptop. The only difference is that one had a slightly better 4870H processor. I normally opened three to four Chrome windows. Each contains about 20 tabs plus two or three Visual Studio code. And such tasks are handled pretty nicely. The build is still very solid after so many years. There is nowhere losing. I did replace a back footer on this laptop. I bought the footer for three bucks on eBay and the whole process took me five minutes. The keyboard is very good. Apple still use the scissor switch based keyboard. You still have the physical escape key which is good for a programmer. The screen is great. It has 100% sRGB, 500 nits maximum brightness. Even after this many years, the screen still holds the same quality. This is the best screen you could buy at a $500 price range. If you know otherwise, let me know in the comment. Keeping note that the screen is not DCI P3 wide gamut, which Apple only introduced it at the 2016 model year MacBook Pros. Oh, and it still has a lot of ports. The battery life is okay. Um, I get around three hours under heavy use, five to six hours when web browsing and watch YouTube videos. Uh, okay, some of the downsides. First is the stain gate. If you don't know what that issue is, it's basically the screen coating wears off very easily, leaving those very ugly scar-like uh, scratches on your screen. I was very fortunate. This laptop itself didn't suffer much from that. There's only one such scar on the screen. It's on the uh, top left corner and it disappears when the screen is light up. So it's okay. But if you are considering buying a used uh, MacBook Pro, um, do check out the screen and see how bad or good it is before making the purchase. And it always carries the common risks when buying a used item. The components can just fail because of the age and you definitely don't have any warranty. Last but not the least, in year 2020, we are seeing two very interesting tech industry trend shifts happening. Number one, is Apple is shifting from Intel's x86 to its own Apple Silicon. I believe with this shift, we are going to see a massive power consumption drop in the upcoming Apple Silicon based MacBook. The ARM architecture just has its own architectural advantage over the x86. No matter how Intel and AMD optimize it, it's hard to catch up. In the first or second iteration though, the performance of those ARM-based chips may not be comparable with x86 counterparts, but I believe it will uh, improve. I won't be surprised to see the new MacBooks have 15 or 20-ish hour battery life. Trend number two, 
AMD is finally taking the lead on mobile processors. This year, AMD released the Ryzen 4000 series mobile chips, which just blows away Intel's counterparts. We are seeing more and more mainstream computers with six or eight cores inside them. The performance will be a huge bump. With that, I believe software developers will start to utilize those additional computing resources, hence making the software more and more computation heavy. This is good for consumers like us because we spend the same amount of money, but we get more performance. But for old systems like this, the day their CPU becomes bottleneck will come sooner than later. Several years ago, quad-core used to be the configuration on high-end systems, but nowadays it's just everywhere. And that's all for today's video. If you like it, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to get latest video. If you have any comments, leave it below. I'll see you folks next time.